going on guys? Well, yesterday we had the long-awaited PS5 reveal event online. They streamed it. It was like an hour long, somewhere around there. And for the first time, I actually got a chance to catch it. I was home from work. It had just started. I said, shit, let me sit down and see what we got. We got the console reveal as far as the way that it looked. We got a bunch of games announced. And I, for one, as a Sony PlayStation fan, am very excited. I've heard a lot of people say that the event was underwhelming or whatever. Launch events are never the most exciting thing in the world, but there were a lot of cool things revealed in this. And I put a poll on Twitter and I even asked the question on Facebook. Do you guys want to see me talk about the whole PS5 event or just Resident Evil? Because I've been doing a lot of Resident Evil content lately. And uh, a lot of people, the, the poll and everything said the PS5 event. So I tried to figure out a way to talk about everything in a cool way. And I think that this is going to be fun. I'm going to rank all 25 of the announced games from yesterday's event. So we got a lot of different ones as far as games that have already been announced, games that have been rumored, games that were announced for the first time yesterday. Some of them are just little tech demos of games that are not going to be coming out for probably three years or more. A lot of different things to talk about, but I thought it would be a fun list to do. Before I even get into it, I will say, just to kind of get my thoughts out there, on the design of the console, the PS5, I'm actually a fan of it. I like the sleek little look of it. Uh, I like the white color. PlayStation has always pretty much been black since PS2, and it's been a very similar design, a very boxy design. So I like the fact that they're kind of branching out, doing something a little bit more sleek, a little bit more attractive, a little bit more new age. So I, for one, am excited. I like the look of the controller. I hope that it holds just as well as the PS4 controller because that DualShock to me is like the greatest controller ever made as far as the comfortability of it. Uh, I'm excited. I wish I could have got a price, but I know them and Xbox are uh, kind of seeing who's going to drop their dick on the table first so that the other one can go in and make it $50 cheaper. But we'll see. As far as the games, though, I will say this. Keep in mind, we are all different, just like with movies, just like with music. It's the same with video games. This stuff is subjective. What interests me in a game is not what's going to interest you in a game. There are certain genres that I gravitate towards that you might not be a fan of and vice versa. So this is not me ranking the quality of these games. This is not me assuming which ones are going to be better. This is literally just me going off of the trailers that we got yesterday and the little information that is out there online and saying from 25 to 1, which ones excite me the most. So starting off at number 25, and this might be controversial because this is a very popular franchise, number 25 is going to be Gran Turismo 7. Now, these bottom two I know are very popular, but I'm just not a fan of the genre at all, so I will never play these. Gran Turismo, I'm not a racing guy. The only racing games that I have ever played and enjoyed is the Burnout franchise. Gran Turismo is very much a driving simulator, so that interests me even less. It looks gorgeous. I know that Gran Turismo fans are probably jumping up and down and probably cursing me out in the comment section right now. I'm just not a racing fan, so even if this game was free, I probably would never play it, so it comes down here at 25. Number 24, for very similar reasons, is going to be NBA 2K21. I'm not a sports game guy. The only ones that I've ever enjoyed is like NFL Blitz, NBA Street, you know, like those more arcadey games, just like with the racing, like those little bit more loose arcade style ones are the ones that I've enjoyed as a kid, but as an adult, I still don't even play those. So NBA 2K21, Madden, anything else that comes out in that type of gameplay, these sports simulators. Again, if it was free, I still would never play it. So it's going to come down here at 24. Number 23 is going to be a little game called Solar Ash. I have no idea what the hell this is. <laughs> it showed a skeleton chick skating around in a bunch of grass. It's got an interesting little hand drawn like visual style to it. Other than that, I have no clue what this game is and it's probably something that I'm not going to be interested in. Number 22 is Jet the Far Shore. Very sci-fi, kind of 2001 Space Odyssey visuals going on, and then they show a little jet zooming around, so are you gonna play as that little jet the whole time? I have no clue. Again, some of these trailers, to be fair, you can't really get an idea what these games are, which is why this is just an excitement ranking. Um, I don't know what this is. I have no idea what they're trying to advertise to me other than sci-fi space stuff. 
Number 21 is gonna be Astro's Playroom. Now we're gonna have quite a few here in this little middle chunk that are platformers, more kiddie games that I probably am not going to pick up unless I wanna get something to play with my kids. And as far as those games that were announced, of which there was like four or five of them, this is the one that looked the least interesting to me. This looked like something that you would have on like a demo disc back in the day, like a bunch of little mini games where you walk around as this robot. I could be wrong. Again, some of these trailers are short and sweet, don't give you a whole lot, but from what they gave us, this looks like something that I probably would not dump any time into. Number 20, now you can get your pitchforks out for real, guys. Grand Theft Auto 5. Look, I have said before, although I haven't done a lot of gaming videos, so I'm sure a lot of you are hearing this for the first time, I have grown very fatigued with Rockstar games over the past 10 years or so. Like, as soon as Grand Theft Auto 4 hit, halfway between playing that game and getting to the end, I was just kind of like, I'm kind of sick of Grand Theft Auto games. It's just the same stuff with the bigger world, with graphical updates and some more mini games thrown in to flesh the world out. It's just getting stale for me. You got the Grand Theft Auto 5, and I know they had the whole thing with the three protagonists, and you could switch from all of them, and the whole heist aspect, which was kind of fun, the little bit that I did play Grand Theft Auto 5, but Grand Theft Auto 5 is the only Grand Theft Auto game that I lost interest and in, didn't even finish. And then eventually that translated over to the Red Dead game, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which I didn't even finish that one because it was essentially the same thing with horses. I'm just not... There's nothing about Grand Theft Auto that excites me anymore. I've played them to death. I love 3 and Vice City and San Andreas, and those are like kind of the golden age for me, but I'm just grown bored with it. The fact that they have transferred this over yet again, going from PS3 back in 2013 to PS4, now they're gonna just port the same game over to PS5, to me, that's annoying. To me, it's like, okay, you've had so long to develop a new game, even if it's gonna be a new Grand Theft Auto game, whatever, you've had so long to develop a new game and your big announcement with PS5 is that we're just gonna take a, a game and just bring it over to the next generation. Can't get excited about that. Maybe if it's cheap enough, I'll pick it up and finally play through to the end, possibly, if I'm in the right mood, but this is just a me thing. I'm bored with Grand Theft Auto. Number 19 is gonna be a game called Bug Snacks. Now this was the most interesting of some of the trailers because it was such a a weird little concept where you have this world where if you eat certain foods that are like living bug creatures that like it becomes part of your body or something i really don't know i don't know where that's going to go into the gameplay it's probably a game that i'm not going to be interested in when it comes out to be honest with you but something intrigued me about it something was just kooky enough about it to where i'm like hmm if that was cheap enough, I don't know, I might check that out. And then at 18, you have Sackboy, which is like the new uh, Little Big Planet game. It looks like they're just kind of focusing it and rebranding it to be more of a platformer. To be honest with you, I did not play a whole lot of either of the Little Big Planet games. I think there was three of them, actually. Any of the three Little Big Planet games. My brothers and sisters did, uh, and I'd seen them play it a little bit. It looked like there was some of those platformer elements, but also there was some very unique quirkiness about that uh, franchise. And I could be wrong saying this, but just from my memory, it looks like it's going a little bit more streamlined, Super Mario style with Sackboy, with the jumping around and the platformer elements. So it looks like it's going more in that direction and getting away from maybe some of the, the puzzle elements or the world elements that I vaguely remember. I could be misspeaking totally, but again, this is one of those games that I would only play with my kids. And of the few that I've just talked about, this is the one that probably looks the most accessible for me and them to play. Just pick up a controller and let's just do some platforming. So maybe I'll check it out. Uh, I'll probably end up buying it for my kids regardless, but it's a game that if I haven't jumped onto the Little Big Planet franchise by now, this isn't something that makes me want to do it at this point. Number 17 is Stray. Now this was probably the most disappointing trailer in the sense that it didn't actually show what the game is because I was so sucked into this little trailer that they had, like showing this robot world with this kind of steampunk vibe, almost like Blade Runner or something, but a little iRobot flavor, and you're just following this cat all around, and then it just says Stray, and that's all you get. So I really don't know what the gameplay is with this. Normally that would make me vote this a lot higher on this, or a lot lower on this ranking, but something about that trailer sucked me in. If it's just gonna be a game where you're playing this delivery cat, it's probably not gonna be anything I'm interested in, but, uh, Something about that trailer gave it a couple extra points for me. Number 16 is Ghostwire Tokyo. Again, some interesting visuals here. It uh, looks like there's some you know, first person 
you know, powers shit going on where there's ghosts or there's different apparitions or enemies and you have these different little mystical powers. It looked cool enough. Again, it's it's not my genre. You're not going to see me get really excited about any of these games until you get to like the top 10. I'm just letting you know now. But Ghostwire Tokyo, the concept of it looked interesting enough to where if I see more gameplay, I might get brought onto the camp of it. You know, it, it's not really something that I gravitate towards. I'm not really much of a mystical arts game type of guy. The concept with the story with, you know, a lot of people in Tokyo or most of the population disappearing and the only people left are like these, you know, powered individuals that have to figure out what happened. That intrigues me enough as a story because I like good stories in video games. Gameplay wise, it just didn't suck me in enough. Number 15 is going to be Little Devil Inside. Now this was one of the weirdest trailers because there's parts of it that really had me intrigued where it looks like almost a, a more child friendly animated version of like Dark Souls or some kind of a hack and slash game. But then they kept splicing it back in with this footage of this old man kind of culminating in him taking a shit. There was like a spot in the trailer where it stopped and you just heard Kabloom, where he drops a fucking nugget. That was weird. <laughs> I don't know what to expect now. Like what is this? But uh, the hack and slash style stuff, the, the enemies, the big cat and the dragons and everything actually look kind of cool. And I'm, I'm a fan of hack and slash. I'm a fan of like Dark Souls games and God of War. So maybe. Number 14 is Pragmata. I have no idea what the hell this game is either. This didn't show any gameplay. This was just a, a visual as far as where stylistically they're going to be going. It shows a dude in a spacesuit and a little girl and a holographic cat and then they end up on the moon. That's all we know. It kind of gave me some like Hideo Kojima vibes. Like it looks like maybe one of those types of games. So who knows, whenever more is announced, whenever the gameplay comes out, this could either go way up or way down on this list, but it intrigued me enough to kind of come in right here in the middle. Number 13 is Project Athia. Little tip for us gaming fans. If it says project in the name when they show you the trailer, that means that bitch is a long time from now. So 2023, somewhere in there, maybe, who knows? It, it's a game that looks very good. Uh, I believe this is the developers of the Final Fantasy games, which I've never really jumped on board with. I've never really been a fan of that style of game, for better or worse. Maybe that's unfair. But it intrigued me enough because this might have been the best looking game that they showed. It looked incredible. Um, it, you could definitely tell there's some Final Fantasy style in there with some of the mystical sides of things, but it looked cool. So it's a game that I'm probably going to forget about because they're not going to talk about it very much. They're not going to show anything solid. They're not going to give us a release date probably until the PS5 is in its first or second year. But it looked cool. Number 12 is Godfall. Now I had heard this title a couple of times. Uh, I guess they had announced it somewhat before this event so this wasn't like a bombshell. But it looked cool enough. It kind of gave me some Darksiders uh, vibes to it to where it looks like one of those hack and slash style games like God of War, like Dark Souls, but the mythological side of it, uh, the, the way that they're kind of showing gods and, you know, there's this war going on, it just made me think of Darksiders immediately. If they didn't call this Godfall, I would have assumed this was Darksiders 4. But uh, it looked cool enough. A hack and slash game, there's a dime a dozen of those, so it's either going to be really good or it's going to feel like a game we played a thousand times. The gameplay that they showed didn't really sell me enough to put this high enough on the list to where they're going to actually be doing something unique with the hack and slash game, but uh, it looked cool enough to where I'm like, okay, I'll keep my eyes out for Godfall. Number 11 is Destruction All-Stars. This kind of was like the techno-punk version of Twisted Metal to where it almost got like some Overwatch stuff going on with the different characters, which I know my buddy Anthony, if you're watching this, he's going to be, you know, dicks hard about that, but he, uh, the game shows these individual characters that look very techno-punk styled with these cars and it looks like some kind of a demolition derby style game, which could be a lot of fun, especially with like some, some couch play, like some old school couch verses or something like that. Hopefully they have that and it's not just all online, but it looked cool enough. I used to love the Twisted Metal games, especially playing it with my brother and just kind of, you know, slapping the living shit out of him because I always knew how to outmaneuver him as a little kid and I plan to do the very same with my kids if I can play this with them but uh, it, it looked cool it looked like it was interesting uh, it looked like something that was you know going for that kind of subgenre of car demolition that we don't see a whole lot nowadays especially with twisted metal just kind of being on the back burner but it intrigued me number 10 is Kena Bridge of Spirits now when I first saw this trailer it, my interest level was very low uh, and then the more that it went on especially once they actually started showing actual gameplay and not just pre-rendered graphics I really enjoyed what I saw it looks like again a lot of hack and slash games in this announcement and this is one of those to where it looks like it's going for those 
you know, Dark Souls, God of War style gameplay, but something about the world that they were building and with these little creatures and these powers that this girl has and the, the style of the graphics to where it's almost animated, but it just, it looked gorgeous. It intrigued me. It, it looks like it's a game that's aiming for younger audiences, but something about this, something about the, the world that they were fleshing out and some of the, the landscape that they decided to show in their gameplay it intrigued me, so I'm gonna keep my eye on this one. Number nine is gonna be Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now this was actually much higher on this list whenever I started putting this together yesterday after the event, but after waking up this morning and seeing a lot of tweets and a lot of news stories with people saying, whoa, hold the phone, this is not a full standalone game, don't get too excited, it's just an expansion. It's just gonna you know, follow up on the PS4 Spider-Man, which may probably be bundled with a PS5 graphical upgrade of that same game. And that decreased my interest a bit. I still love the character of Miles Morales, especially the way that it was introduced in that game. That was a fantastic game in its own, so even an expansion of that is gonna be a lot of fun. But this is going for those kind of uncharted, lost legacy, infamous, what was it, something light, like one of those little side chapters that's about half the length maybe of a regular game. That did decrease my interest because the trailer just makes it out like this is gonna be this new game. Um, so who knows? It might be a lot of fun. It might be way more expansive than I'm giving it credit for. And uh, I'm sure it's gonna be just as much fun playing as Miles Morales as it was playing as Peter Parker in that awesome game. So it's still way up here in the list, but it was like number five until I read that. Number eight is Oddworld Soulstorm. Now I was lucky enough, they had a HD kind of upgrade of, I believe it was Abe's Odyssey. Uh, I don't have too much familiarity with the Oddworld franchise. I will let you know that now, so I may misspeak, but that, I believe, is either the first or maybe the most popular of the Oddworld games. And this looks like it's going for that style because a little bit of my memory about gathering all of your friends and trying to get them out of this situation, that's kind of the vibes you got in this trailer where it was showing you with a bunch of these friends and some of them were getting blown up and picked apart. So it's an interesting world. It's an interesting world that I kind of wish I had more experience with because I do remember enjoying the little bit I played of Abe's Odyssey. And I'm curious to see how they're gonna take that style of like side scroller gameplay to PS5. Number seven is Returnal, which was very much like Edge of Tomorrow, the video game. Uh, it showed this, you know, cinematic trailer going on with this chick who's apparently like an astronaut or some kind of an explorer in space. And she keeps landing on this planet, I guess, to where she keeps repeating the same time loop to where when she dies, she goes back and the world kind of changes a bit. Um, and I did do some research on some of these games, so maybe not all of that was conveyed in the trailer, but that's what I know about it now. And the trailer, the gameplay, I don't know if it was the shooting mechanics or something, and it might be from the same, uh, the same developers, and you guys are like, no shit. But it gave me some Mass Effect, um, some, it reminded me of Mass Effect, the way that they showed the shooting mechanics and some of that third person gameplay. So that's what I thought of immediately when I saw the trailer, was like, oh, Mass Effect. Um, but the whole storyline of just this time loop, which we're going to talk about again here in a minute, is something that's intriguing that I haven't seen in video games very often, and uh, it, it makes me interested in this title. Along those same lines, number six is Death Loop. Now, again, uh, luckily I confirmed it, and then well, I probably should have done the same thing with Returnal, but this is the developers of Dishonored, and that's exactly what I thought of when I saw this trailer. Whenever he did the little thing where he did the, what did they call it? blink, the blink power, wherever you just kind of shoot up onto the roof. I was like, that's that's Dishonored right there. So it's like Dishonored with a more comic book style shooter aspect to it, where you have this very entertaining voiceover going on, where there's interaction between these two characters, where it looks like two assassins are, are stuck in this time loop, and you probably have to jump back into the same world, the same scenario, and just find a different way to go about it, just like with Dishonored where you can go stealthy, you can go balls out and just kill everybody. Um, you probably can choose different abilities along the way to make the gameplay change up, but the trailer just intrigued me. It was a fun trailer. I love the two Dishonored games, so if you're gonna take that style of gameplay and add shooter mechanics to it, I'm probably gonna enjoy it even more. So this one was way high up there for me. Number five is Demon's Souls. Now, I have not played any of the Dark Souls games except for a little bit of two, and I have not played Demon's Souls, but I loved Bloodborne, which is essentially like a spiritual cousin to the Dark Souls game. Uh, I like that style of gameplay, that very difficult, you know, controller fucking throw across the room, rage inducing type of gameplay to where you build up all this power and then all of a sudden you die and you have to go back four hours. 
uh, <laughs> it's a very difficult game, but Demon's Souls is, I believe, the first one, possibly the second one. But they have been talking about doing a remake to Demon's Souls, and I wasn't sure what that meant, if that was just going to be an HD upgrade to it. But from what I'm gathering and from what I got from this trailer, it's a full, from the ground up remake. And though they didn't show a ton of in-game gameplay, it was more so just like these, you know, pre-rendered cutscenes, it looks badass. It looks dark and gothic and crazy. And if it's even two-thirds as fun as, I, as Bloodborne was for me, I'm going to love this one. So this one's way up there, just hoping that I have as much fun and was as addicted to this one as I was as Bloodborne to where I just wanted to keep playing it and keep exploring this wild world. Number four is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Now, Ratchet & Clank is another one of those classic game franchises that I unfortunately kind of missed out on. I didn't play a whole lot of the first few games whenever they came out on the early PlayStation consoles, but I absolutely loved the PS4 remake Ratchet & Clank. I actually platinumed that one because I loved it so much. Even bought the movie, which is a movie that I probably would never watch or have the interest in, but loved it. And this, I believe, is carrying off of that remake, and it looks like it has a lot of the same gameplay elements. I love the whole, you know, opening up time rifts and shooting from different dimensions and everything. It looks like that's gonna be a lot of fun and just gonna let them do crazy things with the PS5 engine. So this one, as far as fun, looked like the most fun game that they announced yesterday. Cannot wait to play it. Number three is Hitman 3. I was really surprised to see them announce this one. I have always been a fan of the Hitman franchise. I've played every single one of them, have loved pretty much all of them. There's certainly ones that are better than others, but I have loved this most recent like upgrade of the Hitman franchise to where um, they had like the first one that was kind of episodic and the second one they just released it all at once, which I think was even more fun, but where you have this really massive open world and the game even encourages you way more than it ever did to do replay over and over and over again and do a lot of different methods of assassinating these characters. I love the whole mechanic where you can kind of open up your menu and choose the way that you want to kill these characters and the game actually kind of helps you along with giving you you know, some reticles and some hints and some objectives to take on to get to that certain type of assassination. They're an absolute blast. I think they're the most fun of the Hitman games thus far. The fact that we're getting a Hitman 3, that they're billing as the biggest and the final one in this trilogy, and the PS5 engine, like they even just showed just the Dubai chapter where you're gonna be up in the sky and it looks like it's gonna be awesome. I mean, if it's just as much fun as Hitman 1 and Hitman 2, then we're in for a fantastic game, but I have a feeling they might have even best, bested those two to take advantage of this new generation of consoles. So, hell yes, Hitman 3. And now we are at the top two. Number two for me is a game that a lot of people were expecting, but I was actually kind of surprised that they showed it because I hadn't really heard anything. Not that I, I dabble in video game news very much, so I probably wouldn't have heard it anyway, even if they were shouting it from the rooftops, but Horizon Forbidden West. I actually reviewed the first game on this channel if you want to check that out, but I loved that game. I thought that that was a fantastic new franchise that was birthed there. Uh, I loved the, the characters in it, the world, the, the gameplay of like these machines being these wild animals and the whole hunting aspect. I played the living shit out of Horizon Zero Dawn, and this one looks like it might be even better because of the different world that you're going into. It's a, a more storm ridden, a little bit darker. Uh, the story has already kind of been kicked off in a very interesting way towards the end of Horizon Zero Dawn, so seeing where they're going to take that story in this sequel, this trailer excited the living hell out of me, and I really, really hope that this is a launch title. I don't remember any of the dates that they gave at the end of these, uh, these trailers, so maybe they've already announced that this is going to be a year or so later. But uh, if any of these games are going to be launch titles that's going to excite the hell out of everybody to grab a PS5, I think this is the one that they should make. But my number one, which I'm sure all of you guys expected even before you clicked onto this video, is Resident Evil 8 Village. Now this is a game that has been rumored very heavily here, and it seems like pretty much all of those rumors came true in this trailer, uh, because you have the title of Village, obviously, you have the whole Roman numeral aspect with 8 being the VI and the Ls, uh, but just even story-wise, the fact that they're going into this more of a, of a snow-ridden village out in the mountains, you have werewolves, you have witches, the whole storyline with Chris Redfield possibly not being a good guy anymore, which I feel like is probably a ruse, but nonetheless, this trailer delivered everything that I could have wanted from an announcement trailer for Resident Evil 8. I loved Resident Evil 7. 
Uh, I'm perfectly fine if they would have went and just went back to their more, you know, over the shoulder stuff that they've been doing with their recent remakes, but I really enjoyed the first person aspect to Resident Evil 7 and the fact this is probably gonna be VR again excites me because that VR experience was incredible. But I loved that game. I'm glad that we're gonna get more of those characters because they didn't get a whole lot of character moments in the first game with Ethan and uh, his wife, uh, Mia. And then in this one, it looks like it's gonna expand on his character quite a bit because that was a con that was a thing that they were criticized for quite a bit was we don't know who the fuck this guy is. He's, he could be anybody. So you're gonna get more of his character. The whole kickoff point of Chris Redfield busting in and uh, I'm, I'm guessing from the trailer, he shot Mia to death or seemingly shot her to death and kind of kicks off these events that sets Ethan into this village. And the fact that we have witches and werewolves and the different enemies that we've ever seen in this franchise, I've seen people bitch about it so far, that excites me. I don't understand how we can have a franchise with zombies and B.O.W.s and these massive ass trolls and all kinds of crazy shit, but werewolves is just too much. I don't know. I love werewolves, I love vampires, I love witches and everything, so I think that's really gonna give this game a different vibe. It's gonna make it stand out and I hope to hell that it delivers as much as Resident Evil 7 did, hopefully even more, because the trailer really got me hooked, and um, yeah, cannot wait. Well, that's it for this one, guys. What are your thoughts on the PS5 uh, release, the event? Did you watch it yesterday? Did you just catch the trailers or the announcements on Twitter? That's usually what I end up doing. Which ones are you most excited for? Is there any down here that you feel like I'm missing out on what is so awesome about these games, go ahead and tell me down below. Like I said, the ones at my bottom could end up being the best games of the year when they come out. I have no idea. This is just ranking my excitement off of what we were given. So let me know down below what you're most excited for. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you are not already one of my awesome followers. And remember as always guys, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.